In 1973, I started working at the Winnipeg Bus Depot in the Express Department. And that's how I made my living until I retired. Uh, yeah, and during that time, we'd have the conversation, well, what can we ship and what can't we ship? And I used to say, well, we could ship a pail of water as long as we didn't put a lid on it. Now, the thought being was, well, if you can see that it's a pail of water, you're going to be careful with it. And the whole idea with this piece of plastic here on top of my tuna fish tin is so that when I go to grab the tin, I'll see right away what's in there, and I'm going to be careful. Now, everything else except these searchlights uh, has to go onto this module here. All these other pieces, the railings, the life rafts, the davits, this part goes up here. Well, let's stop talking about it and start putting some stuff on here. Uh, oh, um, there is the, uh, the, the, the windows in the front of this thing and I was thinking what do I do? Do I, do I clear coat this and try and use the uh, panel line uh, black like we did on that other piece that seemed to look pretty good and then I thought you know what let's just leave well enough alone here. It, the, the shadows on everything you know make the windows show up and that's what I'm going to rely on here. Uh, somebody I think it was Sergey suggested that maybe I cut these out right now you know, see that little archway thing? That's that's actually supposed to be opened. Uh, and uh, he's mentioning how somebody had painted it uh, black, but it didn't look too good. You know, I think that being as that the shadow seems to define some of this stuff, I'm just going to rely on shadows and uh, not try and mess around here with uh, uh, my artistic abilities, which... Uh, are sorely lacking so um, I'm gonna just stick with what I know works for me and uh, I think the, the ships gonna look pretty good even though yes I know there are other things we could have done um, however it'll be, it'll be like my Bismarck which is over sitting in the case right now um, the last time anybody looked at it including me it was quite a while ago so I think when you know I think it's probably the enjoyment of building this thing is uh, probably the most important thing. And uh, what it's going to look like when it's sitting in this case, well, nobody's going to really care. Anyway, uh, let's get some parts stuck on here. Um, should I do this in order? Maybe I'll do it in order, in order here. The next thing we have to do is put the, the railing on. We've got, we've got everything else on here in this, in this section of step 34. Uh, let's, let's see if we can get our railing on. Just a few minutes ago while I'm editing out that last scene that you just saw, my phone, which is right beside the computer, rings. And it was Tennessee Jim. He just wanted to wish me a Merry Christmas, and I thought, you know what, I better thank the viewers for all the greetings that I got at the end of yesterday's episode. Anyway, about our railings here. I don't think it matters which one of these E12s we use here. They're, uh, they're all the same length. And it has to go right here. I'll just reposition a little bit. I think I'm going to have to grab it from just a slightly different angle here. I almost had it. I sort of want to make sure it's going to fit. Okay, I better stop this because what's going to happen is I'm going to be 
scraping all the paint off of it. Mind you, I, I am going to have to repaint, you know, touch up again later. And, and which way is supposed to go up? And just, just let me reposition here. I do have a plan here. Okay, my plan was, you will remember, when we're doing the Bismarck, I made a a little helping hand here that we called the holder downer and I was hoping to get this in place and then be able to carefully put the holder downer on it but maybe I'm going to have to I want to be careful I don't bend it out of shape too okay let's try it again You know, I, I had thought this was going to be easy. I must be doing something wrong. Ah, run. Okay. Let's put a little tiny bit of CA right on that corner post. Then we can shove this post into place 
then I should be able to remove my tape and uh, yeah okay now remember Ron you want just a little bit on the corner there just a tiny bit you don't want it to go running down the side I think that worked out pretty good. Did you notice it wicking its way along? I hope it doesn't glue the tape on somewhere. It's not supposed to. I don't think it will. Okay, let's let that cure. If I use my, uh, if I blow moist air on it, it might turn white. And, uh, I don't want to have to do any more repainting than I have to here. Okay, about half an hour has gone by here. And as much as I would like to, you know, drop a little bit of CA right in the middle there, I think we should get rid of the tape here. Hope it doesn't run down the sides. Just try and get it where the where the post is. Appears to have a little bubble or something right there. Need any more on this end? Okay, I've placed the one on the other side already. I knew that you couldn't handle any more of me dropping it and sighing and moaning. Now, the plan will be to just, uh, do the post on the left, let it cure, and then do the one on the right. Okay, I think it's cured. Now I must be very mindful here when I grab onto this thing. Don't just grab onto it like I was a bull in a china shop or something. Just can't squeeze in from the sides anymore. Okay, let's just carefully reposition here a little bit. And uh, I think I'll use the helping hands to hold this up. Is there anything breakable on the front? No. 
I could turn it up like this and we'll get those little boxes that have to go on the back here. I'm just sort of doing a dry run here. Yeah, we'll use the uh, the extra thin, and maybe the best way to do it so it doesn't wick its way all over the the uh, number 22 here is uh, put some extra thin just all around on the inside. This might be kind of awkward to do on camera. Maybe if I was to reposition here somehow. Gotta get a different angle here. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think I can probably maybe touch that up just a little bit with the uh, 22 later. Okay, this one here, I'll put a little bit less on. Now that kind of wraps it up for this part of part 34. Okay, we got our railing on, we got the doors on before we even painted. Now if we move over onto this part, we need the life rafts and the door and the railing we've already we've already done. So it's just the life rafts. You know, um, I'm just wondering now. Did I maybe uh, have too much contrast going on here? I remember I had wanted the these boxes to be a different color from the 22, but uh, maybe I should have had a, a less blue gray. Anyway, this is what we got. Nothing I can do about it now except paint over it, and I'm not going to do that. All right, so we've got to put a little life raft right here, a big life raft right there. And I think the best way to do it is to have it laying on its side. Now, can I safely lay it on this side? Yes, I can. Okay. I've got it on the green cloth here because it's less susceptible to slide around. Now, just going to do a dry run here again just to make sure that the pegs are going to fit in the holes. We're not trying to put square pegs in round holes if you know what I mean. Yeah, that, that's going to go okay. No, we don't want to get it. Maybe that's too much. All I want is just a little bit on there. In that hole. And maybe I'll put some on the bottom here. Okay. Now I've been meaning to get a, get the tweezers that that automatically lock. You have to squeeze them to release. Now why is that not going? There we go.
Okay, once again, we're going to do a dry run here. You know, uh, that doesn't look right. That looks awfully big. Have I got the wrong one? I'm just going to just check the manual here. I, I didn't realize it was going to... Well, maybe it did. Maybe it did go like that. Yeah, those pegs seem to line up. As best I remember, there was only the two sizes: the small ones with pegs and without pegs, and then this big one here. This is the only big one that I know of. I'm just going to have to twist this thing around here so I can see what I'm doing a little better. Okay, I just double checked the manual to make sure that I wasn't trying to put the wrong one on. Um, it's just a real, real tight fit right here. I got it on. But, um, there we go. All right. This will reduce the size of those pegs. One, two, three, four, five more pieces to put on. And this, this section is done now. Now we're on this very last section of 44. I mean 34. In a way, I wish it was 44, and in a way, I'm glad it's not. Um, all right, all of these five pieces go on the top here. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to do the davits last because they're probably going to be the easiest to break off. We'll uh, we'll go in order of what is the most scroogle, and that would be this part right here. You know, I almost made a stupid mistake here. I was going to take this piece off. And I was going to glue it on right here. And yeah, that, that would have been great. Except that, after the glue had set, I probably would have remembered, oh yeah, I was going to paint the deck. So that has to be done next. So we might not be done today. But that's alright. I'm going to use this number 77, the darker gray, um, on the top here. I know that uh, yeah, it's possible that battleship linoleum was used on the uh, on a deck like that, but I'm going to be using this. Uh, however, uh, things have changed here on this uh, bright and sunny Christmas day, and I'm going to have to cut this uh, video short. Well, I guess it's not short. It's, I'm going to have to cut it off, even though I have I do have time to paint right now. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching, and for those of you who uh, uh, didn't hear me say this yesterday, Merry Christmas, and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.